Oh, and um, I, I, I just want to make something clear. I, I was listening to something last night, and this was brought up, and I fully agree. And they're talking about uh, whatever the conversation was. It was about the so-called Republican primary voters. Now, you and I both know that they are not Republicans any more than you are a communist and I'm a Nazi. You know, it's just there are no Republican voters anymore. These are evil fucks. These are Christian psychopaths. And you, you, can, you can tell who they are because these primary voters don't give a damn about problem solving. So when uh, uh, Senator Scott in South Carolina or the Nazi governor from uh, Florida or, 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 or Poro, former Trump ambassador to the UN, what's her name, used to be governor of South Carolina, you know who I mean? When these people announce that they're going to run for the Republican nomination for president, and they start talking about all the things that they're going to do, huh? we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Listen, um, these people are so fucking stupid. Republican voters, people who still identify with this rotting corpse of the Republican Party, um, they don't give a shit about what Nikki Haley's going to do or what Tim Scott's going to do or what the Nazi governor of Florida is going to do. That, that's not why they would vote for these people. And all the candidates so far are talking about that, what they're going to do. Oh, well, we're going to save America. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. What the Republican primary voters really want, the ones that will decide who the nominee of the party is, they want destruction. They want suffering. They want revenge. And they want someone to handle their pissy little grievances against Jews and gay people and black folk and immigrants and liberals and progressives and Democrats because these miserable son of a bitches who make up MAGA have been so wronged. Oh, their, their Christian fascist religion has just been pissed on all over the place by the Supreme Court and all the courts in the land and media and don't forget Hollywood. All they do is make life horrible for these poor, poor put-upon Christians. Oh, go fuck yourselves, all of you. Man, don't you get tired of hearing Christians whine about how awful it is for them? Mm. And again, I'm not talking about people who follow the teachings, supposed teachings of the rabbi from Nazareth. I'm not talking about that type of Christian. I hate these people. Good news, Stuart Rhodes, the pop-eyed leader of the far-right, neo-Nazi, murderous Oath Keepers militia, sentenced yesterday to 18 long, miserable years in prison. Yes. It's my understanding in the federal system, he, uh, he might be eligible for parole after he serves 80%, eligible for parole after he serves 80% of his... Uh, Sentence? Yeah, Popeye. How's it feel now? And this guy, you know, this guy's got a law degree, a law degree from Yale, and he's a former paratrooper. Oh, big fucking deal. Just because you're a paratrooper, what does that mean? Just because you graduated from Yale, what does that mean? It doesn't mean shit where it concerns this stuff. But those were his credentials. Well, I'm a Yale graduate, not a former paratrooper. You're also a miserable, seditious, traitorous dog. Excuse me, traitorous dog shit. God, I hated these people, still do. Now, according to everything I've heard, everything I've read, the, the sentence, 18-year sentence, was the most severe penalty so far in the more than 1,000 criminal cases that have been adjudicated from the Capitol attack. And apparently, this is the first sentence to be increased for fitting the legal definition of terrorism. 
Huh? Stick that up your Yale ass. Jump out of airplane in your paratrooper outfit with that one, punk. Man. Ugh. Now, of course, the orange Nazi, the bloated, filthy orange Nazi Donald Trump has made it very clear that when he's elected, this time, he's going to pardon everybody. Going to pardon them all. Keep that in mind. Now, the MAGA scum, they celebrate that idea. But normal people should consider that with fear and loathing. Big portions of fear and loathing. For real. Um, this sentence was also the first to have been given to any, so far, the rest are coming, of the ten members of the Oath Keepers and another jerk-off group, the Proud Boys. Hey, we're Proud Boys. We're little boys. We like to play with our wee-wees, but we dress up and try to be like men. Ooh, we're Proud Boys. Look at my beard. You want to touch my beard? Can I touch yours? Yeah. There are 10 members of the Oath Keepers and uh, the Proud Boys who were convicted of sedition and haven't been sentenced yet. So I'm sure today, or yesterday, when the sentence was handed up, where it concer- or handed down, where it concerns this prick, old Popeye Stuart Rhodes, I'm sure the other 10 scum who tried to overthrow the government of the United States and the Constitution and everything we've struggled for, struggled for, for almost 250 years, I'm sure a little frisson of fear went right up one of their sphincter muscles. You know, when, you, when you've got 18 years to serve in the slam and you're already uh, 58 years old, I think that's how old he is. <laughs> oh, well, Stuart, baby, when, you, uh, when you're in prison and, you know, maybe you have, I'm sure they'll send him to the, uh, the Max uh, prison. Where is it? In Kansas? Supermax or something. But I'm just thinking if he had a roommate or a cellmate, which he won't. But, you know, can you imagine him having a cellmate named Blob or something like that? <laughs> hey, I'm Popeye. Stuart Rhodes, what's your name? Blah! Oh, really? Okay, well, you stay in the corner there and I'll stay over here. Blah! Okay, okay. I'm sure Stuart is going to have a lot of fun with his ass in prison. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, he was, uh, well, I said he was in the paratroopers. He was in uh, Army uh, Airborne. Law degree from Yale. Jesus Christ almighty. Um, so this could be for the rest of his life, which is where the prick belongs. Uh, longer if they could work it out. If he dies in prison, you know, let his hang his corpse outside, let it get all desiccated and stiff, and then put him back in a cell. Um, at the four-hour sentencing hearing yesterday, the judge, Judge Meta, uh, um, you know, told Mr. Rhodes that his leadership of the Oath Keepers was designed to push American democracy into violence. And that's why I have, you know, I don't give a goddamn if, if, if Stuart Rhodes lasts one day in prison and gets ripped to pieces by a bunch of people who can't stand the stink of him. I really don't care about people like that. Because they were advocating violence. That's all they're about is violence. Live by violence, die by violence, you assholes. And Meta, the judge, Judge Meta went on directly addressing Popeye. He said, quote, you, sir, present an ongoing threat and a peril to this country, to the republic and the very fabric of our democracy. End quote. Yeah, well, amen to that. Scurvy, bloated son of a bitch. Now, the prosecutors urged the judge to sentence this punk to 25 years in prison. And the argument was that that jail sentence of 25 years was needed um, 
because of the violence at the Capitol and the fact that, what, five people died, a, a couple committed suicide, and that American democracy was, was challenged and, and attempted to shred in a way it never had been before. They, these were Americans. <laughs> these were Americans. One of the lead prosecutors in the case, Catherine Ricosi, is that how you pronounce it? told the judge that old Popeye had been calling for attacks against the government for more than 10 years, not just January 6th, and that his role in the attack on the Capitol was part of a longstanding pattern of this uh, eye patch wearing jack off. The uh, prosecutor, Ms. Ricosi, said that the Oath Keeper's leader exploited his talents and influence to goad his followers into rejecting the results of the 2020 election and ultimately mobilize them into storming the Capitol in two separate military-style stacks in a violent effort to keep President Donald Trump in office. She added, it, quote, it is conduct that threatened and continues to threaten the rule of law in the United States, end quote. Now, of course, the huge, farting, bloated, wheezing, gasping, cheeseburger chomping monster in the room is Donald Jesus Trump. Oh, my God. I hope uh, the prosecutors or the grand juries come up with uh, all the evidence needed to put the son of a bitch in jail. And I'll tell you what, I would, I would be happy to volunteer to be on the jury that tries Donald Trump. Oh, God damn, would I be happy to be on that jury. Oh! Also, Ms. Ricosi, uh, one of the prosecutors, noted that Popeye had shown no remorse for undermining the lawful transition of power and continues... Even though he's, uh, I guess, what is he? He considers, he considers himself to be like a Russian dissident. You punk bastard. You're nothing more than a, somebody who tried to overthrow our system of government because you didn't like the fact that your asshole buddy Trump got defeated, right? But the prosecutor said that the son of a bitch is continuing to, to, to do this shit just four days ago. Popeye gave an interview from jail and, and once again, bearing down on the bullshit that the election uh, was all fraudulent. And in his interview, he, he kept saying that the government, I guess that would be the liberals, <laughs> oh, Jesus, was, quote, coming after those of us on the political right. You're on the political wrong, you asshole. And during that same interview, Popeye said, it's not going to stop until it's stopped. This country needs regime change, end quote. Uh, no, we needed regime change back when George W. Bush, the war criminal, was president, and we got it. But there's a way to do it, Popeye, and that is you bust your ass to get someone elected. You don't bust your ass to overthrow the government and hang the vice president and uh, uh, rip the sec uh, Speaker of the House to, to little tiny bloody pieces, you sick fuck you. <laughs> Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, can, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.